Today we're looking at an environmental gas sensor from Adafruit. Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're taking a look at the SGP30, which is an environmental sensor, a uh, multiple gas sensor from Adafruit. The actual SGP30 sensor is that little guy there with the white dot in the middle, little six pin DFN package. And it is made by Sensirion Technologies. And it's able to detect uh, volatile organic compounds and equivalent CO2. So this could be a useful little device to throw into your projects if you're worried about the air quality in your house, you know, or say you have an attached garage or something and you're worried about VOCs getting in. Well, VOCs are volatile organic compounds like benzene, which can be very detrimental to your health. So this is a nice little sensor that allows you to look for those things. And it's super easy to set up and gives you a nice readout so I'm on focus you can see my uh, total volatile organic compounds is rather low and my equivalent CO2 measurement is 442 parts per million let's uh, let's take a look at uh, Sensirion's website and have a look at this thing alright so we're taking a look here at uh, Sensirion's page for the SCP-30 uh, sensor and you can see here it says for HVAC and indoor quality air applications it's a multi-pixel gas sensor and what it really is is just a tiny little square you can see here it's 2.45 by 2.45 millimeters super tiny now we're using the Adafruit uh, breakout of it but you can come down here and you can see what it gives you is total VOCs and parts per billion in an H2 based uh, equivalent CO2 parts per million it only needs between a volt and a half to just about two volts runs on 48 milliamps super tiny accuracy is 15 percent of measured value output range uh, 0 to 60,000 parts per billion in volatile organic compounds and 0 to 60,000 parts per million in equivalent CO2 you get a one sample per second and it's humidity compensated and that's a pretty cool thing that we'll, we'll take a look at that let's go over now to the Adafruit page and have a look at their information on this okay we're on the Adafruit page now and of course I'll put a link to that down below and you can see this is not a cheap sensor but uh, you know is your health or your life worth cheapness or are you worth investing a few dollars in it so again, it's just telling you that it is the multi-pixel gas sensor, fully integrated mock sensor, blah, blah, blah. It detects, you know, volatile organic compounds and H2, which I don't know exactly know what H2 is, but the H2 is able to give you an equivalent carbon dioxide reading. And what's nice is this is I squared C, so all you need is 5 volts ground and clock and data and you're good to go. Here's a little information on the, on the type of readings you can get, blah, blah, blah. You can read this all yourself. I'm not going to go into it. I just want to go down to showing you the uh, where to get the library and stuff to hook this up. So, pinouts. Pinouts are really simple. You got your VN and your ground you got your clock and your data and it has a 1.8 volt out if you uh, need it for something pretty simple and why okay so here's a library I will put a link to this here but there's a super simple way to get to it and all you need to do is go to your Arduino click on sketch go to include library click manage libraries and that's going to bring up a little box here my computer's not the fastest I apologize okay once that's loaded all you have to do here is come in here and type SGP 
30 hit enter and it's going to search for that and you can see right here we have the Adafruit SCP30 you can select the version you want always get the latest version click install and it will pop it right into your Arduino uh, IDE then we can come down here go to examples Adafruit SGP30 sensor and there's your example and it has everything you need so setting this up is relatively straightforward I'm using an Arduino Uno you can use whatever Arduino you want and uh, I'm using this for display as well so they're sharing the I squared C lines but you can see we have our, our 5 volt line coming off the Arduino going to the red rail and then we have our ground line coming off the Arduino going to the blue rail the SGP30 set up there there's our power there's our ground there's our I squared C lines and in this case we zoom in here you can see they're going right here to SDA and SCL, which if your Arduino doesn't have those extra pins, it's simply A4 and A5. And then I brought the output out to a 16 by 2 LCD. Pretty simple. Let's take a look at the code for it. All right, here's the code I made to use the uh, sensor with the LCD screen. So we just have a three includes. We need to include our LCD library, the wire library for I squared C, and the sensor library. Then we need to assign both of them names. And we need to create this function to set our absolute humidity so that everything can be adjusted from it. Now, if you have a DHT11 or 21 sensor, you can actually read from that to get your your absolute temperature and humidity and you won't have to do an approximation like I'm doing here next thing we do is we create our counter variable because it's going to take an average of uh, 30 then we're going to start our serial comms which we always use for debugging start our LCD and then check to see if the sensor is there. If the sensor is not there, it's going to print a message to the serial monitor letting us know it's not there. If it is there, it's simply going to print out the serial number of the sensor. Then we're going to set our cursor to 00, zero which is the upper left corner. We're going to grab a couple of measurements. And then we're going to print those measurements out. Our total VOC on line 0 and our equivalent CO2 on line 1. Then because the sensor can only take one reading per second we are going to wait one second. We're going to inc increment the counter up to 30. After 30 it goes to 0. And then here is where we have created our variable TVOC base and equivalent CO2 base. We need those values in order to calculate our actual values. So it's very important that you have these lines in here. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Ask me how I know. Then I just clear the screen and we start the whole thing over again. So there it is, all nice and running. And uh, we seem to have some readings going on there. Now I've taken a uh, cloth here and I've soaked it in isopropyl so if I bring that near the sensor yeah there you go that sends our VOCC's way up and same for our CO2 if I actually breathe on it you can see they also go way up so there you have it I think this is a neat little sensor, and it could be very useful in some uh, projects, especially, you know, like I said, if you have people that have breathing difficulties, COPD, emphysema, and you want to keep a close eye 
on the air quality in your home, something like this would be great. I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Hey, check out the Teespring store. I've got a couple of new things in there. I've got a resistor color code poster, which is only going to be available until we reach 100,000 subscribers, at which point it will no longer be available. So it is a limited edition. I also have a small uh, four inch decal of the resistor color codes that you could place you know, somewhere near your bench. So if you'd like to help support the channel in some way, that would be a great way. Other than that, that's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.